Right now we have our character working and being spawned onto our map. Now what I would like to do is I would like to implement a way to uh, spawn more chunks when we are moving around our map. Okay, so first thing that I would like to do is I would like to refactor our world script since it contains the logic uh, of spawning our chunk when we run our game. It spawns our chunk at the point zero 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 and then it goes to the right and upwards spawning the next chunks but instead i would like those 10 chunks to be spawned around our player and next i would like to calculate the next position around which we should calculate what chunks should be present next later on select only those chunks that are missing and then generate those so this is the idea here but right now as i have said our world spawns our chunks a bit differently so let's stop our game and let's open our world script. Okay, we are in our world script. And beside those data that we need to have in our world, we have this generate world method that clears the dictionary because we want to basically recreate it every time when we press our button uh, for the purpose of testing. But instead, we will want to remove all this logic. So let's for now control K, control C to comment those uh, lines out. And what happens next? Where next, we are using this for loop uh, with the x and z coordinate to spawn our chunks. Well, instead of doing this, I would like to get the positions which are around our player, so which are around the point zero zero zero. So to do this, we will need to retrieve a list of positions that we need to remove and a list of positions that we need to create. Now, how we are going to do this if we want to call only one method something like world generation data let's call it world generation data equals and let's call something like get positions that player sees and we are going to pass player position okay so this is the code that I would like to have here in our class. So this should contain all the data that we are going to need to create our world. And be it uh, if we want to modify it or if we want to create it from scratch. Now we have no player position, so let's pass here vector 3 int dot zero. So this will be our starting position. Of course, later on we can load uh, this position from our saved data and maybe load the specific chunks. But basically we want to pass here a vector 3 int. Okay, so let's first create this world uh, generation data. So I will slide it down and at the bottom of this class I will create public struct world generation data and structs are value types basically what it does it uh, ensures that we need to pass to it all the data that we want to have in it we need to initialize all those fields when we create our world generation data as opposed to a class where we could predefine those to be null we want them to be filled in by our method okay so this will be public list vector 3 int chunk positions to create and we need to remember that we have our chunk positions and the data positions. Now we can have the data position loaded for more uh, data around our chunks. For example, to create, well, the uh, chunks at the edges of our map. So we will want to load a bit more chunk data as opposed to our chunks. So we want to spawn five chunks, but we need to, for example, have seven chunk data. So this is why we have those two lists, chunk position to create and chunk data positions to create. Next we are going to have chunk positions to remove and all of those will be public list vector 3 int and chunk data to remove. So we will want to remove the existing chunks and the data points uh, in case one, they were not modified by our player and for the chunks, of course, we want to unload the unnecessary chunks that the player will not see, or rather that the player is too far to see. Okay, so first thing, or rather what we are going to do in this video is we are going to populate this uh, struct and we are going to use it to generate our world. So now we are going to create this method. So let's right click on it, quick actions and generate this method, get positions that player sees. Let's right click and go to the definition. 
And before we can create this method, let's rename this to player position. So the argument of, of this method. And right now we are storing in the world the dictionaries as well as the chunk size and chunk height. Now I would like to put those chunk size, chunk height, so basically the world data, the chunk data dictionary, chunk dictionary, into a separate uh, class or separate struct. So let's slide down and where we have our world generation data, let's create public struct. And we are going to call this world data. Okay. And here I will want to have our dictionaries so we can basically copy those and paste them here. But in our struct, we cannot define the default value for those. We need to only pass the uh, public dictionary vector3 in chunk data and chunk data dictionary, public dictionary vector3 in chunk renderer, chunk dictionary. And we are going to pass here public in chunk size and public in chunk height. And now having this struct, we are going to go to our top of the world script and just below our fields, we are going to call awake. And at the top of this, we are going to create prop tab tab as the type type world data. And we are going to call this world data or maybe lowercase world data. Uh, okay. And we are going to set the setter to be private. Okay. And in the awake, we are going to call world data equals new world data. And to define a struct, we are going to call chunk height equals this dot chunk height we are going to leave those parameters here in the world so that we can set those up chunk and we need to pass a comma at the end and next we're going to select control space to get the auto complete uh, for your input and we are going to select chunk size equals this dot chunk size comma and we're going to call chunk data dictionary equals new dictionary and we can use uh, IntelliSense to create it and at the end we're going to type chunk dictionary equals new dictionary and at the end of our definition of the struct we're going to add semicolon okay now this should be good and we need to finish this initialization of our dictionary okay so now we have our world data so now what we can do is we can comment those to dictionaries and it should create some errors in our code so let's save it Let's go back to Unity and we should see that there are some errors uh, in our code when we stop our game. Okay, and you can see that there they, they, there they are. Let's click on the first one and inside our world we are going to call world data. Okay, world data dot chunk dictionary and we are going to use this and we are going to uh, in the generate world loop through this world data the chunk data dictionary in the for each loop. Okay, now it should be good. We can access those. Let's go back to Unity because I believe that we have one more error. Yes, we have. And this is in our world in the get block from chunk coordinates. We are going to paste world data dot chunk data dictionary. If we go back to Unity, we should see that we have no more errors. So everything should be working fine. We can press play and test it. And this way we have, uh, okay, we have some issue here that we have not implemented this uh, get positions that player sees. So let's comment this out for now. Okay, and let's again press play to test if our code works. And let's see if we can generate our world. So now we can finally start creating our method. So this is our, uh, let's uncomment this inside our generate world. This will be world generate data, world generation data equals get positions that player sees. Let's go to the definition, and here we are. Okay, so now let me paste the code for this method. And for now, we are going to call, uh, create a list of vector3 ints, all chunk position needed, and another one, all chunk data positions needed. And both of those will be populated by the world data helper class, and one will be called the, the get chunk positions around player, and another get data positions around player. Both of those will take this, so the world script, and the player position, so the argument that we have passed here. So those will calculate all the positions that we would have to generate for the specific player position. So those are uh, including the chunks that already exist in our game. 
So uh, to create those methods, we can right click, uh, generate uh, quick actions and generate method inside our world data helper and do the same for the second method. So now we have received the data about all the chunk positions and all the data positions that we are going to need. Now this is not what we need to create, but rather what needs to exist. Next we will need to have two more lists, so one will be list of vector3 int chunk positions to actually to create and the chunk data positions to create. So maybe in our dictionaries we already have some of those chunks created, some of those chunk data already existing, so we do not need to recreate those. We need to only create those additional ones that doesn't exist yet. So to do this we are going to call world data helper select positions to create and select the data positions to create both of those methods will be taking world data which are current values that we have in our dictionaries all chunk positions uh, needed the first method and all chunk data positions needed the second method and the player position will be needed so that we can sort the positions that we need to create by the distance from the player so we can ensure that we can create the positions closer to the player first so again, we can right click on those methods, quick actions generate, and again, quick actions generate. And those will be methods that we are going to need. And now, at the end, what we are going to do is create a world generation data struct data equals new world generation data struct. And we are going to assign those chunk positions to create as the chunk positions to create, chunk data positions to create as the chunk data positions to create that we have generated. And the remaining parameters, since we need to pass them, we are going to create new vector, a new list of vector3 ints, so that we can deal with those later on. For now, let's focus on those methods. And of course, at the end, we need to return the struct that we have created. Now, since those methods are pretty long, let's take a break now, and in the next video, we are going to create those methods. So save the script, and in the next video, we are going to continue. See you there!